The transfer portal is on fire, and who should Florida State try to go after? You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Should Florida State go after Cormani McLean or Tyler Williams or Mayan Wool, Damian Martinez? How about a big-time defensive tackle? How about a big-time tight end like Javante Connor? Hi, my name is Brian Smith, and today's episode of Locked On Seminoles is going to be you, me. It is going to be informational. It is going to be all-encompassing. Usually, my goal is to give you a specific entity that I'm going to talk about, a specific take. This is why something's going to happen. Today is the polar opposite. If you're looking for something dead on, that is not today. This is about names, their backgrounds, why I think Florida State should or should not look at them, and some of the other schools as well and how that plays in. Talk a little bit about NIL and its impact in all of this. It is day one of the transfer portal, which runs from April 16th through the 30th. I'll say that a few more times, but just to clarify, this is just for players to announce. They do not have to end their transfer portal information. They have to announce between the 16th and 30th and file with the NCAA, and then things will get started. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to get started. So I want to talk about a couple of players. And again, this is informational. There's no hot take here. This is not something that I've got inside scoop on. Although I'm sitting here, I've got texts I haven't even got to yet because every five minutes or something new. But I have several different players that I want to talk about. There's a lot of opportunities to get in the mix for Florida State because some of these kids are from Florida. They recruited before and or they're a player at a position they need. One of them, interestingly, that I'll talk about quite a bit is a player they played against and he's pretty good. And he would certainly bolster Florida State's defensive line depth chart. So first player, I think this is easy because he got in the portal and he's such a big name is Cormani McLean. I had the opportunity to scout him, get to know him a little bit. Seen him probably 10, 15 times over the last few years of his high school career. He spent one season with Deion Sanders at Colorado. Even though Deion Sanders and him didn't work out, that doesn't mean Cormani's career is over. We're talking about as an elite, a physical skill set as you're going to get for a corner. Long, athletic, can break on the ball, has the ability to make plays that other guys don't because his arms are like tree limbs, and he's quite honestly a physical player. He's not a real talkative guy in general, just shooting around on the sidelines with him, but he lets his hitting kind of do his talking on the field, and most corners don't play like that. He hits more like a strong safety. The other thing about Cormani is he's got pretty darn good hands. He could play receiver. So when he has a ball come his way, it's going the other direction, possibly for six. He'll make a guy miss, and he'll take it to the house. Finally, on Cormani, here's the background with his recruitment. Florida. Alabama and Miami were perceived finalists committed to Miami. I was at the ceremony. I was the only one that picked him to go to Miami because I'd I'd heard about it under the radar prior. But after that, of course, he ended up at Colorado and a lot of things just haven't been talked about him because he hasn't been in the state of Florida that much. With that being stated, again, he's only spent one year in Boulder and he's no longer with Deion Sanders in that group. He just entered the portal. So this is going to be interesting. Florida State's one of the schools that's allegedly going to take a run at him. I have no idea if that's going to work out or not, but here's what I do know. Even though Florida State's DB room is ridiculous, it's really, really good. They did lose Greedy. We talked about that a few days back here on Locked On Seminoles. They have to go after guys like this. In-state player, position that is critical to winning, and he's a guy that played at a high school program that's dominant in Lakeland, They've won state championships the last few years. They constantly put out players. It's about talent, getting kids from your state, from the key programs, et cetera. Florida State needs to do a better job of recruiting Central Florida and Polk County. Anyway, this is a guy that's a big thumbs up in that direction. Just say it. If Florida State doesn't make a serious run at him, I'd be curious to why, and I'd probably come on here and rant and rave because I, I know the people around that program. They, it'd surprise me. So I can't imagine why they would. Also, Ironically enough, from Lakeland, also put his name in about the same time. 
Tyler Williams, wide receiver, 6'3", 6'4", played at Lakeland High School. He's a guy that can run by players. He's a guy that has the ability to take the ball in a 50-50 situation and do it well. Really good feet in tight space despite being a longer player at receiver, and he has the ability to make guys miss. Tyler Williams has only been playing receiver for a couple of years, and he was really, really good. I think he's a player that could end up in the NFL after three years despite not having a big name for himself after one season at Georgia. He barely played like most freshmen at UGA, but now he's in the portal. Yeah, I know you got Hakeem Williams at Florida State. I get it. You need as many of those as you can get. And Tyler is the kind of guy off the field you want because he's an elite student. Here's a little stat for you. He didn't take one but two higher-level math classes as a senior because he wanted to. Give me all those kids you can get. Quiet, doesn't want to be in the limelight, but will score touchdowns, and that's the bottom line. Tyler Williams would absolutely, unequivocally, help the Florida State football roster and probably in year one in some capacity. Never have enough guys that can go up and get it or just run by players. So you got to go with that. The third player I want to talk about is a little bit more unique because he – I don't think was really on Florida State's radar all that much. He's from North Carolina, originally committed to UCF, signed with Ole Miss in the portal after one year. But the Knowles need more help at tight end. This kid's a flex, very athletic, 6'4", 220-ish, give or take. I don't know what he exactly weighs now after being at Ole Miss for a little while. But you're not going to find many guys that are this kind of athlete just hanging out. He's going to have a bunch of offers. It's Javante Connor. Again, he's from the state of North Carolina, signed with Ole Miss. He is also in the portal. You could use him in the slot. You could use him like a receiver, throw fade balls to him, kind of like Tyler Williams. They're almost the same size, and he's really more of a receiver than a tight end. He'll grow into that over time. More importantly, again, athletes, athletes, athletes. If you get some of these kind of guys, it helps you augment your tight end room, but it also makes your receiver room better too, because he's going to be used like one. Tight end is not a position of strength right now at Florida State. They had a guy leave. They have a couple guys, or a couple guys leave, and they don't have the depth that they really need. They got some young guys that are talented. I get it. Don't rely on freshmen at any position. That is the rule of thumb. If they end up helping a lot, that's the bonus. It's not the guarantee. I would take him, and you would have a better opportunity to use some 12 personnel, especially in the goal line, if you got a kid like this. I think Norbell and the Knowles would do well to do so. To that point, regardless if it's Javante Connor, Florida State needs at least one tight end in the portal, even if it's a more of a blocker, kind of like Biscuit was for Florida State last year, Douglas. But I don't know what all they're trying to do. I guess they could take two if they took Connor, maybe took a bigger one. That's something to think about as well. When we come back on the other side, we're going to talk a little bit about a player that I think is going to impact the portal market, not necessarily for Florida State with NIL. I've talked about him this week, and we're also going to talk about a 2026 Florida State commitment that happened today right before I came on this show. All right, FanDuel.com. It's playoff time in the NBA, the NHL, and baseball is in full swing with FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs and slam dunks, all in the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Also, Monopoly Go. If you've had the opportunity to download it like 150 million other people, you'll probably know about this. I'm a competitive person. I assume you are too. So think about this. If you have an opportunity to check it out and go on and play Monopoly, you've probably done it since you were a kid. It's a lot of fun. But this is a great twist of Monopoly because you get to play not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. Here's the best part. It's getting to mess with your friends. You can change the rent on iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But here's the catch. You could also rob their vaults and be getting riches for yourself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. It's not just the competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments and huge rewards. To set the game up and join your friends, download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play.
So the player that I'm most curious about with the transfer portal opening up today is Damian Martinez. Auburn needs a running back. Miami needs a running back. Um, it's possible that schools that just have one guy that's really good, but not a bigger back, Martinez 230, that will go after him. He'll have 20 offers. Texas might go after him. LSU needs a running back. Florida likes power football. Wouldn't be surprised. Florida State doesn't necessarily need him. So why would I bring him up? It's about market value in NIL. As I brought up at the beginning of the show, and I've talked about in a couple prior shows, he's a very important barometer. Martinez is a one-year rental. He's going to be a junior. He's going to turn pro. Elite player. 6.1 yards per carry playing at Oregon State. Well coached, but they don't have the same skills like LSU does. They don't. They don't have the same skill as like Miami does at receiver. They don't have the same skill is some team like Ohio State or some team like North Carolina did at receiver, et cetera, for him to be coupled with. Good players, but not as many of them. What's his value going to be? He was getting around 400 k allegedly, as I say it in air quotes for those you can't see me that aren't on YouTube. Make sure that you think about how talented that kid is, his unique skill set and everything, because I think he'll set the market although it's at a position that's not as highly used as maybe D tackle and, and the talking about the transfer portal, because there's more of them, but he's still a trendsetter. If you hear anything about him and I'll try to bring him back up, that's important. I think he's going to command better part of a million dollars from a few teams that think they can make a run this year. I'm curious if Florida state would make a run at a player like that this year, next year, whatever, because that's a lot of money. I don't know what the battles in and some of these different Teams have in their NIL departments, but that's a lot of cash. But certain teams just have very, very deep pockets like Texas, Miami, and some of these other schools. They really do. I'm curious about that, and you should be too. Also, I mentioned a minute ago that Darion Williams committed to the Knowles, 2026. Here's the background. He committed right before I came on the show, so I don't have necessarily a ton of information about him, but I do know the following. Tampa, Florida. Gaither High School, he's just a shade under six foot. He lists himself at six foot, but I really don't think he is. 170 pounds, give or take. Can play flanker, slot, running back, DB. He's played all that stuff in high school in some capacity. Screens, things of that nature are important. But here's the really good part beyond him being able to slither through a defense like a lot of other shifty receivers do. This young man's vision helps him separate – not only from the defenders, but other players at his position. He really sets up his cuts, fluid motions. His feet are in tune with his mind of what he's going to do, setting up guys. He will make them miss, and they don't even physically make contact with him. Doing it against teams like Gaither, Tampa Tech, and other schools that are big box programs in the greater Tampa area, really, really talented young man. He's got two years of high school left. Again, he's class of 26, so he'll be a junior this fall. Committed to Florida State. Really like him as a prospect, but I've only just begun to break down his film. I'm curious if I get a chance to see him at a camp pretty soon because this is a young man that has a lot, a lot of skill. I'm curious what Norbell's offense would do with him. I think there's a world of upside, and they would get him jet sweeps. they find a way to get him deep. He runs by guys, even in Tampa, pretty easily, and they'd find a way to get him in the offense over the middle and get him open too. So, Really excited about him when I first saw his name come up. I'm like, oh, that's the kid from Gaither. And then, boom, watched his film for the first time. That's an impressive young man. Florida State's receiver room will get better once Darion is on campus. Really good football player. Going into the last part of the show, I want to talk about what's important, not only for Florida State, but for some other schools with the portal. And I'm going to use a player that's, ironically, somebody Florida State's played against as a barometer, kind of like I did with Damian Martinez a few minutes ago. That's next on Locked On Seminoles. All right, LinkedIn College. You've heard me talk about this before. If you haven't downloaded the app, if you haven't used it for yourself or your small business, you should. When you're hiring for a small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. It has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. I've used it as somebody looking for an opportunity coming out of college, internships, and now on the other side of that, it's an opportunity for me to look into people, see how professional they are if I'm hiring somebody for an intern role or something similar. 
LinkedIn isn't just a job board either. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even when you are not actively searching for a new job, but might be open to a perfect role. You could be in that case, or you could be doing that for your small business, trying to find somebody in a given month. Here's a great stat. 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. They don't go anywhere else besides LinkedIn. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate in 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. This third segment is really important because it's the barometer of, of everything today. Before this portal season's over, I'm going to go through several shows where somebody probably entered the portal while my show's going on. It's random. There's no way for me to project anything. There are coaches caught completely off guard that a star player is leaving. It is random. No other way that I can really think of a, a word to use it better than that. Just random. So when I looked at Twitter today, or X, if you will, and I saw Jermaine Wool in the portal, defensive tackle from Louisville. That's that's the kind of example that you have to expect. For and against, there's going to be somebody like this that's unexpected, kind of like Greedy Vance, I guess, to a certain degree. Maybe that'll be the only one that's going to leave your program. So when somebody else loses one, you got to think about it from a couple perspectives. Stats, again, 141 tackles, 25 tackles for loss, 12 and a half sacks in 39 games over four years, 300-pounder, out of Louisville, Jermaine Wool. Is Florida State desperate at defensive tackle? Of course not. However, there's a couple of things to think about. Injuries are going to happen. I'd rather have him on my roster, and I sure as heck don't want to play against it. If that kid goes to Miami, if that kid goes to North Carolina, if he goes to, oh my God, if Dabo actually took a transfer and went to Clemson, whatever it is, there's a chance you could play against him in the regular season, or maybe he goes to Florida. They need D-line help. Maybe he goes to LSU and you play them in the playoff. There's a lot of ways to look at this. That also brings up the other topic that I think is very, very interesting that's been on my mind for a while. If you watch this show, you know. That's the NIL part. I mentioned it a minute ago with Damian Martinez. I think he's going to get a lot of money because he's the best running back in the portal until otherwise proven for this cycle. This is the kind of kid, while he played at Louisville, that could command pretty good money, too. And maybe that's why he's leaving Louisville. I don't know. They have a lot of NIL money, but for whatever reason, he's leaving. Maybe he just wants to see something different. Whatever it is, that's his business, not mine. The point is still the same. You don't get many chances at guys like this, even if you've got a pretty good depth chart. So here's the question for Florida State fans. Would you spend, I'm just going to use percentages here, 25% of your allotted money that you were going to use for this spring cycle to get a really good player that may not be a starter? But a really good player that's going to compete for it, you don't know for sure. Farmer and Jackson are good. But if you have three really good D tackles, your chances of winning the ACC and making it to playoff go way up. And again, you keep him away from somebody else. It is about the players being on your roster. 80% of college football is roster management slash recruiting slash transfer portal, however you want to say it. Getting a kid like this, even if you've got to overspend a little bit, it's not about what you get. It's what about the others do not get. He goes to Texas, Georgia, Miami, whatever it is. You may play this team in the regular season or in the play. You don't want to see him again. Do you take that? How much would you use? 15%, 10%? What do you think is fair? Florida State doesn't have a ton of needs in the portal. They could use a top-notch offensive tackle. About everybody could. They could certainly use a big play receiver. So I talked about Tyler Williams earlier. And they could also use a, just a key defensive player and a weak guy in general, which Wool is maybe not elite, but he's pretty close. And he's an interior D lineman. They're not going to put up magnificent, magnificent stats. They're going to put up good stats and help their teammates around them. And then when you could rotate them, it makes everybody better. So, again, how much would you a lot if you were Florida State for a player like this? And if you want to use somebody else, as an example, maybe another position, just theoretically, that's fine. How much would you drop for an elite receiver? What percentage? How about an elite nickel? Like they lost Greedy. He can play nickel. 
but they only have so many options now with him gone. Got probably got a really good starter, certain young man who just transferred from Alabama, but they don't have any depth. How much would you do for that? These are the kinds of questions that Florida State, Alabama, Georgia, USC, Ohio State, everybody has to use. What do we have? What do we need? And if we take this, are we going to short, we're going to hamstring ourselves somewhere else. There's got to be a no point. It's not easy. Being a head coach like Norvell, you think about X's and O's and recruiting. It's more about your roster management, keeping your guys healthy, keeping them on pace to make the NFL, and not letting them hit the portal. And when you got a chance to grab somebody else to improve your roster, does it work out for your NIL allotment? And then if he gets a lot, does that, I guess I should bring this up too, does that mess up your roster because he got a bunch of money, hadn't even played there yet? There are so many moving parts. We could talk about that every day for the rest of the time as long as the NIL is in the game. So with that being said, please like this podcast. Please share it. Please give me a positive review, like a five-star on Apple. I would truly appreciate it. And comment and give me questions and answers about anything that you thought about from today. I'd love to hear it. Going to be a lot more transfer portal discussion moving forward over the next couple of weeks because it's going to dominate college football news for quite a while. We do have Florida State spring game coming up. We're going to talk about that later this week here at Locked on Seminoles. Until then, everybody have a great day and take care.